What's up America? This is Kim with Geauga Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we have a real fun video for you. Today we're going to check out a level 3 Duridium plate by Shot Stuff. We're going to shoot some fun stuff at it and see how it holds up. Before we get into the product itself, let's talk about some ballistic ratings and give you some education on that. So if you're not, we're going to go through all the specs of the actual product itself. That's coming. But first let me kind of go through the very complex Overly complex, I guess, in my opinion, uh, rating system. All right, and we can get all inside the weeds of all the little minutiae of all these things, and I'm sure the trolls are going to be on fire on this one. So I want to make this as simple as possible because the industry, and it has nothing to do with shot stop, every, everyone in the industry kind of complicates things a little bit, okay? So first of all, uh, the National Institute for Justice, NIJ, they're the folks that basically create these ratings and testings. Uh, that these plates earn. So if your plate is a whatever level it is, there's certain standards that they have to meet in order to do that. I am not even going to try to go down through all that. If you want to go ahead and research all that, please feel free. And just know that they're all held, regardless of the company, they're all going to be held if they're, if they're uh, certified those levels, that they achieve the same level. Now, what are those levels, you asked? They are 2A, as an apple, 2 3, A, 3, and 4. Okay, so again, 2A, 2, 3A, 3, and 4. And in that order, okay? So 2A is lower than 2, uh, 3A is lower than 3, okay? And so forth. There is no 4A. This is NIJ ratings, okay? Now, that seems fairly straightforward, but companies as a whole, as the, as the industry, I should say, have kind of added a little thing in there, and that's the plus rating, okay? And what does that mean? Really what it means is that there's not an NIJ rating for the plus. What the company is saying, that specific company, is saying that we have a three uh, plus plate. That means that, that that plate will stand up to far more than the standard three plate, but not quite a four by the NIJ standards. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's, according to that company, it's way better than just a three, but not quite a four. And same thing for two and so forth, okay? So that's the deal. Now, let's talk about another elephant in the room. Everybody always wants to talk about, uh, well, you know, we gotta have the best. Everyone's level four, level four. I, mean, I know a lot of people have level four, and none of them do anything close to what I do, and I get paid to wear kit for a living, uh, it's super high risk stuff on a SWAT team. And uh, I think that to say that you need level four is outrageous. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, by the way, it's America. Buy what you want. If level four is, what you, is, is, your, is your deal, great news. Shot stop will set you up. I'm just saying that we have to look at things from a realistic perspective. Not always like, what is the best? Okay. Um, what does that mean, by the way, when we talk about four? Well, that means that what you're saying to me is, hey, I really believe that I'm realistically going to go up against 30 odd six armor piercing ammo. I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. 30 odd six armor, armor piercing ammo. That's, that's going to be your threat that you're really going to have to face down. Uh, again, I mean, some of our uh, equipment for going after really bad people. Uh, really armed people, even that isn't always rated to that level. And so I think that we have to be realistic about what we want. Again, it's America, buy what you want. The particular plate that I picked, I believe, is pretty much the highest level that is reasonable, okay? Uh, also, we have to have, I mean, guys come to my class all the time, and I don't know, especially rifle class. Rifle class, for sure, that's like all the... All the Gucci gear comes out for that. Uh, uh, and a lot of guys will come in, this full kit, they got all this stuff on all these plates. A lot of them are level four. And regardless of where you got, they are bulky. There is no two ways about it. I mean, uh, companies like Shot Stuff have done tremendous in the industry to really, uh, to, to minimize weight and, and bulk. But at the end of the day, that's, you're asking a lot. Armor piercing rounds and whatnot, that's, uh, you're asking a lot. And so what happens typically is that these people, uh, who don't do this for a living, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to bring gear and, and check it out, it's fantastic. But my only pet peeve is if you're going to bring this stuff and you're going to wear this stuff, then you better wear it. 
for the whole class, right? There is no like, I can't, I can't be on duty and be like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to take all this off now. Yeah, I've had enough today. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. So that's my kind of uh, training side of things. We're going to get into the specs of the actual plate and how it performed. You're going to see some cool stuff. And we're going to be shooting it with all kind of stuff to see what happens. But I just hopefully want to give you a little bit of education, a very broad view, okay, of the levels of plates that you're going to see and what that means and what the NIJ, NIJ is. So again, real quick, 2A, 2, 3A, 3, and 4. One more area to take into consideration is material, and that also has to affect the other big thing, which is cost, okay? So you have steel, deridium, and ceramic. Um, my experience up until this point, this is the first iridium product I've ever used. I have been all ceramic, if you're going to buy high-end, uh, for me, I'm just saying my experience. And ceramic is very light, so just to kind of break that down in general, steel is very heavy, and by far the, less, the least amount of cost, okay? Because we're all willing, all this and people who wear this for a living, uh, more than willing to pay for a lighter weight, and especially when you're wearing this all day long, okay? I know people get really into like, what's the ounces of this one and that one, and I think that's a little silliness, but I mean, we're talking pounds, uh, double, sometimes triple weights, depending on steel and, and uh, comparable, uh, plates of ceramic or iridium, okay? I'm not going to get down again to those rabbit holes, all the nuances here. Just understand that steel is the heaviest and the cheapest. And then as you go up in price and as and lower in weight, you have your other two, which is ceramic and iridium. Now, ceramic, which I said I have a lot of experience with, one of the, again, the big pluses, very lightweight, very thin, uh, very good uh, potential. The downfall of that is, is durability in a sense that... Um, if you throw your stuff around or hits a hard object, uh, they say that a lot of times, and again, I'm not an expert, I don't, I don't x-ray this stuff for a living or anything like that, but they say that that uh, abrasive hit can cause fractures in the, in the actual plate itself. So uh, one of the major advantages of this new Duridium product is that it can take a beating. It's um, some type of polymer, I don't wanna get into it, some type of magic stuff a scientist made, way above my pay grade, I don't know. But it can take a lot more beating than ceramic, okay? So for all y'all troll me out there and tell me the specific compounds of it, I don't care. Nobody else does. The bottom line is that one is very durable. So I would definitely in the future, especially after the performance that I've seen, and you're going to see here in just a minute, I was very impressed. And so now let's check out the specs. We're not going to show you guys the plate right now because I don't want to give away how it handles up. But before, like we said, it's Deridium. They rate it at level 3 plus. It's 0.7 inches thick, so it's very thin, and it's 2.7 pounds, so it's very, very light for all it can handle. Another great thing about ShotStop is they offer a 15-year warranty, which is three times longer than the standard of the industry. The plate we're gonna shoot today is rated for 5.56 and also 7.62 ball ammo, otherwise known as the AK-47 and the AR-15. We're gonna get this set up here. Uh, this is gonna be, again, level three. Obviously, it should take everything that it's supposed to all the way up to 556. Five, um, we're, of course, if it does what it's supposed to, not very exciting, right? That's what we're expected to do. So, we're also going to shoot some higher stuff at just to see what it'll take today. So, I'm going to get this set up here. We're going to take these up to these tires and let's rock and roll. We're going to start off with the 9. I have my MP 2.0. Uh, we have a mixture of all ball, but we have 115. 124 and 147. So let's see how it holds up. All right, so here we go. We got our five five hits. Cut this open real quick. This is obviously not very dramatic. If obviously this didn't work, this would not be good armor. But as you can see, nothing penetrated from the back whatsoever, as expected. Uh, I mean, we did shoot it five times at very close distance, but. Uh, so far, so good. So now we're going to move up, by the way, to hollow points. Now we're going to start off with some defensive hollow points. We have a SIG V crown and it's plus B, so let's see how it does. All right, so there's our two obvious shots there. Again, hollow points, nothing came through. What's amazing is the impact holes. You can see where the ball ammo hit, and then that's the defensive rounds. All right, boys and girls, here's the real test. So this is, we're going to put two rounds of 5.56. Five, the first one, 55 grain ball, nothing special. 
The next one is a 40 grain coyote round. That thing is moving at 3,800 feet per second. Smoking fast. So let's see how we do. There's our two hits. Let's see what we got. As you can see, nothing came through at all. Here's still this, this is obviously still the label, still intact. No penetration whatsoever. Uh, so I'd say that's pretty impressive. We've shot this now what probably eight times with different rounds. So now we're gonna really step it up. This is not rated for it, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. Uh, we're gonna try some uh, more exotic stuff. So here we go. All right, so this next one's gonna be a little interesting. This is the 7.5 Burno. Technically speaking, uh, it's kind of rated for it. I mean, it's a it's a unique and exotic gun, I guess, if you want to say that. We're trying to do a review on it. At the time, we had some uh, reliability issues, and we're working with them before we can do a review. But this is going to be uh, definitely a unique comparison. Just so you guys can see what we're what we're working with here, I'm going to show you guys the difference between the 7.5 Berno and a 9 millimeter. So you can see that's a big dog. That's a very unique round. Uh, it's a bottleneck. This is uh, about 30 caliber, right? 7.5. So it's significantly bigger than the 9mm. This, this guy is moving at 2,000 feet per second. It is a hollow point. And the whole purpose of this round, by the way, uh, for this gun anyway, was designed so that it would pierce a soft body armor at over 100 yards. So... I don't think this is going to give it any problems whatsoever. I think it's going to stop it, but kind of a unique cartridge to check it out. Let's check it out. Go on this side. All right, so I'm trying to not hit everything center mass because obviously we're just punishing the same plate over and over. So I'm trying to move this a little bit. Let's see what we got. Wow, uh, big uh, big movement in the back here as far as uh, you know the, the deformation of the plate, but absolutely no penetration whatsoever. So so very impressive with that. Now we're gonna get crazy. We're gonna do a, a 12 gauge slug. See what happens. Again, guys, it's not ready for 12 gauge. So this by all means passed everything it was supposed to pass, um, but. We want to see what it'll actually take. So will it take a 12 gauge slug? What do you guys think? Let's find out. All right, so now we're going to do a, a rifled slug, 12 gauge. This uh, bad boy is moving at 1,550 feet per second. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say this is going to definitely defeat this armor. Again, not rated for this, okay? Just for fun, we're going to see what will happen. So here we go. Let's see. So, impressively, it actually rocked the tire and moved it off. Again, I don't expect it to survive, but let's find out. Wow! That is incredibly impressive. That's a 12 gauge slug. Rifled slug, 1550 feet per second. Obviously would not want to be wearing this. Wouldn't want to be wearing this for any of the rounds, but obviously, but uh, it did not make it through. That's pretty incredible. I'm going to pull all the tape off. You can see the shot there. Again, probably the, by far the weakest spot since that's where most of our rounds have been going. <laughs> I could probably grab some of this. See what we can grab here. There we go. Let's cut this open a little bit, see what, see what we can see. All right, so we can see here, starting to get all the layers. I know what you guys can see, and I'm trying to do it so I don't lose a lot but you can see the uh, slug there is just pieces never made it through I got everything out of there 
And as you can see, it went through a lot of the layers, but never, never came through. That's very, very impressive. The other, uh, the nines and whatnot. You can actually see some of the, the bullet head there. The back of the bullet. Anyway. Very, very impressive. We showed you it on the range, but now that we're in the studio and have better lighting, let's take a closer look at how it held up. So you can see the back here, nothing made its way through. There's definitely some deformation going on, but it, it held up. Let's look at the front now. Neil cut it open on the range as we've seen, so you can see inside the big hole. We hope you guys enjoyed our review of the Shot Stop plate. If you guys are interested, we'll put links below. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, a like, a share, a comment. We always love to hear from you guys. You can follow us here on, on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Always remember, it's better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.